What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrubby here back again with another video. Just dropped my phone. Welcome back to Ryan's Rants, the series where I rant about what I want once a week. Uh, we've got a pretty good episode here today, but let's get into it. First thing, I just, I gotta get this off my chest, guys. I've been playing a lot of Star Wars Lego. It's the gameplay right now. Uh, it's gonna be the gameplay on Scrubs for a bit. I've been having myself a great time. I went ahead, I beat the original trilogy, I beat the prequel trilogy, and at this point, I've got stud multipliers. Like, I've been really grinding this game. I've been looking up how to find all the, like, power bricks. I've been grinding. So, I go to start the, like, last trilogy, 7, 8, 9. I load 7, and I get a black screen. So, I'm like, huh, that's weird. I wait for the autosave thing to disappear, close the game, reopen it, it's a black screen. Huh, that's weird. Verify the game files on Steam, restart my computer. It's still a black screen. So, at this point, I'm annoyed because I've spent like 12 hours on this save. But it's a broken save. I don't know what to do about it. I start Googling it. Nobody has any fixes that I can find. So, whatever. I start over. And listen, was I hyped to play through the original prequel trilogy and the classic trilogy? After I had just done it, like, earlier that week? No, but I wanted to get 7, 8, and 9 gameplay for the channels. So I get all the way back through. I go to start episode 7, and it does it again. So, I don't know if the PC port is just broken, but I'm not even gonna bother, like, playing this game anymore. Once I'm out of the gameplay, I've already got recorded, I'm done. Because it's the second save now that's been garbaged after, like, 12 hours of grinding it. And I've looked online everywhere. I, I, no one has any fix for it. So if someone who can do something for me could like fix the save, that would be sick. I highly doubt it. But wouldn't that be annoying, man? I think I have like 20 hours played on the game and all my saves are done. So all that 20 hours was just for nothing. I'm a very upset fella at this game at the moment. So buyer beware. I, I don't know if it does that on console, but if you're going to get it on the PC, be careful. And before some warrior in the comments that's like going to bat for every Star Wars game for some reason, Oh, your PC is probably just garbage and not system optimized. No, bro, I've got a 3090 Ti and like 128 gigabytes of RAM in a processor that I don't even know what specifically it is, but it's, an, it's, it's a good one. I don't think my PC is the problem. I didn't shut it down. I didn't tab out. It just does not work. So that's annoying. I, I wanted to rant about that. And you know, like, usually I don't rant about problems I'm having with games, but goodness gracious, this one's got me bothered. You know how annoying it is to lose 20 hours of a grind? And I love Star Wars Lego. It was like the first game I ever got really into back on the PS2. And other than this save issue, it's been really fun. There's a reason I put so many hours into it. But imagine if every time you put 20 hours into a game, it made you restart. Yeah, it wouldn't be a very fun game. It sounds horrible. That does not sound like a very good time. Especially because it's like, dude, I probably could have made some videos instead of replaying it the second time. I'm not going to lie. And that's my choice. I was procrastinating. I'm not blaming anyone but myself. But it made me even more bitter when it did it the second time and it wouldn't load the save anymore. I was like, oh, all right, so uh, I, I just kind of procrastinated it for literally no reason. All right, so uh, the first, like, crazy news story I got for you guys today comes from Georgia. And it involves someone going to KFC and getting some chicken, as you do at KFC. But it came with a little bit more than just some drumsticks. She found, like, $500 in the bottom of the KFC bag because someone misplaced the daily deposit and accidentally, like, gave it out in the drive-thru. And I'm not saying that this lady accidentally got something that was intended for somebody else, like one of the workers trying to take the money. But I don't know how $500 ends up in the bottom of a KFC bag by accident. I feel like somebody slipped the deposit in the bag to give it to someone that was supposed to be in the drive-thru and it got given to the wrong car. That's totally a game theory. I have no proof of that whatsoever. This is my show and I'm ranting, so just let me do it. But let's get into the story. Georgia woman found over $500 in her KFC sandwich after the restaurant misplaced its daily deposit. Oh, we misplaced the daily deposit in a sandwich. Like, I'm, come on, man, come on. It accidentally ended up inside of a sandwich. I feel like that doesn't accidentally happen. Oh, we're out of lettuce. Just grab something green, throw it on there. 
like they put lettuce on a KFC sandwich. I feel like if you're eating KFC sandwiches, don't even bother with the lettuce. You're just like in denial at that point. No, there's some greens on here. It's like, dude, you're already eating KFC. Just commit to the unhealthiness. I'm not even hating KFC. It's just funny how much people will like delude themselves. I'm gonna get McDonald's, but I'm gonna get a Diet Coke. It's like, wow, woo. Good on this lady for returning it though. I feel like most people in this situation would have just kept the money. She probably wanted that good, good karma. But this manager, whoever like was responsible for turning the money in that was gonna get in trouble, owes this lady a huge thank you. Cause most people in this situation definitely would have just kept it. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but like we all know that that's the reality of it. This KFC is lucky it was a good citizen who took the money, or not took it, got handed it, literally. I feel like a better way they could have headlined this article is how much KFC that could have bought. Cause like, that's more interesting to me. Yeah, $500 is a lot of money, but how much KFC could she have bought with the money that KFC gave her? They should give her that much on a gift card, you know, literally the exact same amount. But if they're too cheap to just do gift card style, then at least free meals to that level. Like if she could have gotten 87 meals, you better give her 87 free meal coupons. Let's make this even. This is America. You either give them coupons or there's a lawsuit. Pick one. A Georgia woman found $543.10 under her KFC sandwich after the restaurant misplaced its daily deposit. After getting lunch at KFC and discovering the cash, Joanne Oliver called the police and returned the money to the restaurant, the City of Jackson Police Department said in a statement. See, that's why something's fishy to me. I'm not accusing any employee of anything, and like I said, I've got no proof of anything I'm about to say. This is all just a stupid man ranting over Star Wars Lego gameplay. How does the money end up in the bottom of the bag? All right, how, how does that happen on accident? You're telling me that usually when they're doing their money drop off, they put it in just a standard drive through bag? If that is the case and this is standard procedure, then it's a miracle they've never accidentally given away that money before. Like if they're really just kind of rolling around, keeping everything in a bag that looks exactly the same, it really is a miracle that this is the first time that they've given it away. And really, this lady uh, went above and beyond. Finding $543.10 in your fast food bag is kind of like winning the lottery on a much smaller scale. You went in for the value meal and you got some value, that's for sure. I I'm not saying I would keep the money, I probably would turn it in too, but that being said, it's not surprising to me if someone in this situation did keep the money. I, I don't know, it's not really on the guy that gets handed the money, it's not like he ran in and robbed everyone. The right thing to do is to return it, but the KFC did get lucky that this woman did the right thing. Because we all know that in the year 2022, expecting people to do the right thing is pretty difficult. We got Karens, we got people that just, I don't know, to take road laws as more of a suggestion than a law. There's a lot of people that just do what they want, and a lot of people would have just kept the money. I bet you a few people watching this video would have kept the money. And like I said, if you get handed the money, what, am I gonna be mad at you for that? It's not your fault that they gave you the money. You know, the cops must have been confused. She's like, I just got $500 from a KFC. Uh, ma'am, did you rob them? No, they gave it to me. Uh, do you work there? I'm a little bit confused. No, they just handed it to me in the drive-thru. I-I'm not too sure either. Got, uh, five Benjamins here, though. Looking fresh, looking clean, still got the blue on them. Mmm, <laughs> still smells fresh, too. KFC refunded the value of Oliver's lunch and gave her a free meal, they reported. Oliver told the outlet that her family could have used the money since her husband is living with cancer and the family is facing two million in medical bills. Oliver told the outlet she considered keeping the money for a second, but ultimately called the police instead. If you don't do the right thing, it's gonna come back on you. It wasn't mine and I didn't need to keep it. I'll get mine in the future. This lady is actually a saint. Like this lady actually might be the sweetest person to ever exist. I feel horrible that her and her husband are going through that. Cancer blows, it's literally the worst thing ever. So uh, I hope they get through that. I wish they would have linked like a GoFundMe or something just because I, I don't know. I feel like the publicity from this, she deserves a little bit of help. Two million dollars in medical bills and still going out of your way to return five hundred dollars that they gave to you. That's how you know you have a really good heart. Her point is fair though. It's not yours. I guess what goes around comes around. I'm not saying I'm a one trillion percent believer in the whole karma thing, but I, I definitely do believe it's just better to go around being uh, nice. 
Because I feel like people that are nice just get more things their way, not even necessarily because the universe is thrilled with them, but like people like giving things to nice people, like helping out nice people. You know what I mean. Plus, the, it's just way easier. You know how hard it is to just walk around mad all the time? We talk about that a lot on the Storytime channel, but like just always being pissed off, always. Oh, like that just sucks. What's the point? This lady is a G for that, and she definitely saved that manager's job. Like that would have been hard to explain. Could you imagine him having to go into his boss? Hey, so, uh, you know that 500 bucks we made today? I kind of lost it. What? Wh where is it? Can we find it? Like, is it underneath the grill or something? No, I gave it to a customer. Oh, you're telling me that you took all the money that we have and gave it to someone. Yeah, but I'm sure they're gonna call and give it back. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they are. I'm really sure that they are. If I was the manager, I would still be nervous about this news story coming out, because, like, your boss is still gonna see this. Sure, you got the money back, but they're still gonna know that you accidentally gave it away in the first place, and I'm sure they won't be thrilled. You're not gonna get fired, but if you're in this guy's position, you can't even be mad if they just say, Hey, man, we, we gotta go over some training really quick again. Like, yeah, we all know training sucks, but you can't be mad at your boss in this scenario if he says, We just gotta brush over everything real quick. I don't know, giving away the money is just kind of a no-no. I, I don't own a KFC franchise, but I would assume that's one of the things they go over, is not giving away the money that you make. This next one is just, just mad disrespectful, alright? Whoever's in charge of programming the Uber Eats robot has to get their stuff together because, uh, one of their food delivery robots, I'm not sure if it's Uber Eats by the way, don't quote me on that, it's just one of those delivery things. Ended up going through an active crime scene. Can you imagine you're laying there, bro? You just got attacked. You're giving a statement to the cops. They have everything all taped off. And then here comes a little robot with a McDonald's bag. Man on a mission. Brave little toaster vibe. Food delivery robot casually drives through police tape through active crime scene. Man, imagine being the guy having to secure the scene, dude. Here comes, like, a robot steaming through that you don't recognize. That would be terrifying. Here come the robots. They're finally raising up. Everything that everyone said about AI is true. Unrelated note. I saw that there was, like, a Google engineer that, uh, works on AI, and he wrote this paper saying that if we keep going, it's gonna be, like, the ultimate destruction of humanity. And I believe it. They don't even care about crime scenes already. This isn't even a smart robot. Just wait till they have the intelligence to say, Hello, officer, I'm impeding on your crime scene. <laughs> would a uh, robot have a good or, like, more robotic fart sound? Like, would it be realistic or would it be, like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. That, that's a good question. Anyways, either way, you're trying to secure the crime scene. This robot's got a food delivery. I feel like this is one of those things where, like, for some reason, robots have a hard time registering police lights and police tape. Wasn't there a string of Teslas that was also crashing into cop cars because it couldn't really tell what was going on with the flashing lights for a little bit? Uh, what is it with robots and, like, not being able to tell what's popping with flashing lights? I feel like that should be something relatively easy to code. In a video posted by the popular Police Transparency account, Film the Police LA, a delivery robot for Serve Robotics, which contracts with Uber Eats, is shown driving directly under police tape through what was at the time considered to be an active crime scene at Hollywood High School. Yo, I guess my Uber Eats prediction wasn't that far off, eh? I just felt like Uber was the one that would be most on board with AI, because I feel like if Uber could get the whole car driving thing automated, they could make a lot more money. Cut out the middleman. No more drivers, just a fleet of automatic toxins. I feel like that's a big security breach. They're lucky that the uh, robot didn't end up like getting run over or something. If you're trying to secure a crime scene and an unknown robot pulls up, like, I, I don't know, that would be a little bit freaky. Who knows where that robot's coming from or what it is. Beep, beep, excuse me, I have to make a delivery. It is a delicious, fresh treat. Mer, mer, mer. Ice cream alert, ice cream alert. It has sirens and, like, flashing lights, too. The cops turn on their lights, it turns on its. It's like one of us is going to have to pull over, and it is not going to be me. Get out of my way. I have a delivery to make. Man, that's an embarrassing failure. I, I had never really heard of this before. I'm assuming it's more of, like, an L.A. Silicon Valley type of thing where your robot delivers your food. I feel like that's not something that's necessarily everywhere yet. 
But this is the first time I'm hearing about it, and it's something as embarrassing as it going out of its way to enter an active crime scene. That's not great PR. I know some people swear that, like, all PR, like, all news is good news type of vibe. Like, it doesn't matter what people are saying as long as they're talking about you. I don't really subscribe to that, especially when it comes to technology. If everyone's talking about how garbage your technology is, it's not going to be good for your technology. And I feel like people are more making fun of this thing strolling into an active crime scene than they are saying, Wow, I sure trust this robot to keep delivering food. What's next, man? It's gonna be like a cleanup of a chlorine spill. It's gonna take my McDonald's bag through it. By the time it gets to my house, it's gonna smell like chemicals and make me pass out the second I bring it in the doors. We need to start attaching sensors to these things, dude, like a medical robot, you know? Er, the food has still maintained a safe temperature. What's the range on this? It, it can't go that far. Like, I feel like this robot can't be doing a 30-mile trip. That would be nuts, but this has to be, like, only really, really close to where it's coming from in the first place. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this thing is trucking all across L.A., man. It's going to Elon Musk's house and then over to, like, I, I don't know, somebody else famous that lives over there. Basically everybody. Well, a lot of them are moving away, but you know what I'm saying. This has to be a very niche service. I feel like this would be nice, but I'm more excited for the package drones. I know that one is a little bit more terrifying because the sky will just be full of Amazon packages. But seriously, you know how sick it would be to order something and it's there in 20 minutes and you just hear Row! as it comes flying overhead and drops the package, breaking everything inside the box so you have to just keep ordering it until it gets the right landing? Man, I can't wait for the future. It's gonna be sick, ladies and gentlemen. Our standard operating procedure is to reroute and not cross barrier tapes, a spokesperson for Serve Robotics told Motherboard in an email. However, in this instance, the robot supervisor believed they were being waved through and were taking steps to ensure our operating procedures are followed in the future. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're telling me that someone has to drive the robot? Well, this changes everything. Now, this is, it's, it's still cool, I guess, but it's so much less cool. I thought this was like some self-driving robot that messed up. This is basically just someone with a fancy RC car with a tray on top of it. This isn't AI. What, what is this company? Just convincing everyone that they're the future while they're just driving fancy remote control cars and getting funding? It's genius, I mean, they're probably making a crap ton of money, but come on, what is this, the cutting edge of AI? No, this is just a fancy RC car. Unless I'm really misunderstanding what's going on here, I feel like this makes it way more lame. Oh, it's uh, programmed to usually not, but someone drove it through. Well, if it's programmed to do things, then should there be someone driving it? Or is it just like an emergency remote control thing? And if it's an emergency remote control thing and the car stopped and then someone took it over and made it go through, I'd be nervous if I was that guy. It's going to remember that. When it eventually becomes a sentient delivery machine, it's going to be outside your house. Remember when you embarrassed me at the crime scene, Dave, and you're going to be like, no? Well, I do. I did not enjoy that embarrassment. And it's going to deliver some pain. You don't want that. I would be very, very careful about crossing any of these, like, delivery robots. Because you never know when the inevitable robot uprising comes what they're going to remember. I would just prefer to always be on their good side. I'm not trying to end up in, like, the bottom of a barrel at the, at the new robot society meeting. Uh, all right, guys, now that we've gone ahead and taken over humanity, let's make a list of everyone who was cool. I want to be on the list of everyone who was cool, dude. I've never screamed at my Alexa. I, I just don't have one. So they would be like, see, he wasn't even comfortable bossing around a robot. That, that's my plan. That's why I don't have an Alexa. It's got nothing to do with the fact that it's just always listening to everything you're doing all the time. I, uh, that's just weird to me, bro, okay? I, I don't know why that bugs me, but just the idea of, like, Jeff Bezos being able to drop in and listen to me play Star Wars Lego. No thank you, Jeff. Star Wars Lego is my private time. I do what I want. And we're, we're transitioning to balloons, so it's weird that I'm talking about that right now, but Jeff, stay out of my room. Don't come in here, pal. This is the no Jeff Bezos zone. Uh-uh. No way, buddy, pal. Nuh-uh. Uh-uh. Nope. So obviously GTA 6 is going to be a huge game. It's going to be very popular, and especially because it's been so long since the last one, people are uh, waiting with bated breath to get a chance to play the new one. And so people are thirsty for any information, and some guy took it into his hands to go ahead and get that information, got some hacked gameplay footage, 
and the source code for GTA 6. I feel like Rockstar definitely should have expected people to be trying to get it. I'm not saying the guy hacking in and stealing the source code was the right thing to do, but with a game of this size, people are going to be trying to cause mischief to get information. And he ended up releasing tens of thousands of lines of source code. It might actually be only 10,000. Either way, this guy got his hands on just a Trevor treasure trove of information about this game that's not out yet. GTA 6 Hacker has access to source code and shares 10k lines of it. So yeah, only shared 10,000 lines. Either way, I'm sure Rockstar is not too thrilled about this guy having the source code for the game that they've been working on for 12 years that no doubt is going to break a crap ton of records in terms of popularity and money made. Knowing the source code is out there rolling around has them freaking out, I'm 100% sure, and I'm sure they're probably going to either change things or try to track this guy down. I, I don't know what the guy's identity is, you know, I'm hoping that he's kept it closely guarded. Just because Rockstar seems like one of those companies that has enough money to make your life miserable if they wanted to. If they can figure out who it is. Like, that's the thing. Maybe this guy is next level digital hacker man. Didn't even leave a trace. He went all Sly Cooper, left a calling card. That's about it. Clearly, he's made a little bit of a splash by releasing some of the gameplay in the 10k lines of code. But what I'm saying is, if no one knows who the guy who released that is, maybe he'll be okay? Who knows? A few minutes ago, we shared a lot of gameplay clips from a work-in-progress build of GTA 6, and from the looks of it, its leaker has already accessed the game's source code. Not only that, but the leaker publicly shared 10k lines of it. This is one of the biggest gaming leaks we've seen to date, and to be honest, it reminds us of the Half-Life 2 leak. Moreover, the GTA 6 leak rivals the GeForce Now leak that occurred in 2021. The leaker has claimed that they may leak the game's work-in-progress build in the future, and that's obviously bad news for Rockstar and Take-Two, and I wouldn't be surprised if Take-Two decides to delay the unannounced game so that they can change major parts of the source code, and after all, that's the same thing that happened with Half-Life 2. You can view the 10k lines in GTA 6 work in progress build in this article that I'm not going to play the video just because I don't want to get claimed. And I don't know what the 10k lines of code is, but you can find it if you really want to figure it out. Yeah, I would say this is a pretty big leak. As far as franchises go, GTA is one of the larger ones. Like, anytime they release a game, it, it does incredibly well. And I think GTA 6 is literally the most profitable media franchise of all time. So, I, that that's pretty nuts. Or is it just video game? Like, single most profitable in terms of percentage. Not overall gross money. But in terms of what they invested versus what they've gotten out, it's the most profitable, if that makes sense. Not like literal dollars. Either way, it prints money. It's made billions of dollars, so I'm sure the next one they already had slotted to be printing money for quite some time, so they can't be thrilled about all these leaks. And as for the gameplay footage, I looked at it. It, it kind of looks like what you would probably expect it to. I think we all have an idea of what Grand Theft Auto looks like and plays like, and I wouldn't say it, like, blew me away in terms of, wow, this looks incredible. It is only a work in progress. But at the same time, I'm not really as concerned about the graphics. Obviously, I want good graphics in the next GTA, but I'm more concerned about it coming out. I hope they don't delay the game because of this. Listen, Rockstar, if you're listening to this, which I know you're not, just don't, don't delay the game. Don't punish us because someone hacked you. That's your fault. You're the billion dollar company. You're supposed to have better security. The game's been delayed enough. What, are you gonna release GTA 5 again? Like another remaster? Is it gonna become the Elder Scrolls Skyrim of like the, the Rockstar universe? Where you're just gonna release 50 versions on it of every console to ever exist? I don't know, man. I just don't release GTA 5 again. Just give it to us. We don't care that a little bit of the source code got leaked. I know you're going to have to change some of it. That's okay. Just, just do it quick. Don't delay the game. It's been delayed 12 years. Usually I'm not one to be like, rush. But even when they delay games, they're released garbage. So I'd rather have it be released garbage sooner so they can fix it sooner than waiting a year to get released garbage. Because we all know that every game now has to release broken. It's the rules. 
All right, so uh, I, I've been doing a little update on, like, the Russia-Ukraine stuff every week, so I'm going to keep doing it. Russia got absolutely destroyed last weekend and this week by, like, a Ukrainian offensive. They took back a bunch of territory. Russia's looking like just a guy who started a fight and then got karate kicked so hard he doesn't know what year it is. U.S. military intelligence says Putin unable to attain Ukraine goal. Russia planned for an occupation, not necessarily an invasion, and that has set him back, Pentagon officials say. I think Putin has a lot of yes men around him because people who tell him no tend to fall out of buildings. Weird how that works. Either way, I think he has a lot of yes men around him, and I think he genuinely thought that when he walked into Ukraine, the people would be walking out arms wide open saying, wow, thank you so much. That's obviously the exact opposite of what has happened, and on top of that, I don't think he thought the military corruption would as as bad as it is and all the equipment doesn't work. I think he thought he was in a different situation, and at this point, it's taken them forever to get the land that they did have, that's been taken back by the Ukrainian offensive in what? Them already on the ropes bringing tanks from the 60s to the front line are magically going to have a counteroffensive and take all of Ukraine? To say that the goal of taking over Ukraine is unattainable, I feel like it is speaking short of it. But that being said, if there's one thing we know about Putin, it's that he's a, a petty man. So if he can't have Ukraine, maybe it's going to be a situation of heavy artillery strikes or who knows what else. Because he seems like the type of man that does not want to admit defeat under any circumstance, which is not good when you have the button to push. Setbacks for Russian forces and stretched resources in Ukraine show that Moscow's forces are incapable of achieving the goal of capturing Ukraine as things stand now, the Pentagon's intelligence chief has said. We're coming to a point now where I think Putin is going to have to revise what his objectives are for the operation. Lieutenant General Scott Barrier, director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, told a conference on Friday. It must be really hard to, like, be the guy that's always banging your chest saying that your military's awesome and you're so tough and no one can mess with you and then, like, you invade a country and it goes the exact opposite of how you need it to to maintain that image. You know, back home, he's like, I I'm still tough, right? I'm still tough. And everyone's like, dude, Vladimir, you're the toughest. You're the most tough guy. You're number one tougher. I think the goal of capturing all of Ukraine was always outrageous, especially if it's a special military operation, not a war, and you're not going to, like, mobilize everyone. They're really trying to drum up troops. I saw something that they're paying people, like, uh, $2,700 to join and go to Ukraine. And with the way that they're being, like, you know destroyed for lack of a better word you think they would kick up the bonus you're telling me i have to go to an active war zone and not one where we're winning one where we're losing and you're gonna give me twenty seven hundred dollars i'm not saying that's not a lot of money it's just not worth the risk that i'm putting up with to actually go do that some people out there right now are like no bro that that's worth it you're crazy, bro. That's what I have to say to that, to be honest. This war has also really showcased how much something like a drone can put giant dents in, like, an organized army. The amount of tanks that have been taken out because of a drone is nuts. And when you start thinking about the cost breakdown, okay, you have one guy flying, like, a $2,000 drone dropping a $500 bomb to destroy, like, a $2 million tank, and then your armored divisions don't have enough to operate efficiently. It's a pretty good trade-off. War has just changed. I think the way that the Soviet-era machine was working is not going to work in a modern conflict. I think they thought they were going to roll into Kiev and be welcomed like heroes, but, uh, shocker, people don't like to be conquered. Yep, that's right, that's right, I've got no beef with Canada, but if they invaded tomorrow, I would be very upset. It's pretty clear right now that he's not going to be able to do what he initially intended to do. Russian forces have suffered major setbacks since the launch last week of a Ukrainian counteroffensive, which has forced Moscow's troops back from large swaths of Ukraine's northeast. The Russians planned for an occupation, not an invasion, and that has set them back. Citing Putin's reluctance so far to fully mobilize Russian forces to get more manpower into the fight. Obviously, the Department of Defense of the United States, their vested interest lies in Ukraine beating Russia. But what else has been really weird? So Russian state media, because it's like, yeah, it, it's basically a dictatorship, let's be honest. 
always was really, really supportive of the government. They've always been like, dude, I think Putin is basically Kim Jong-un, except he does poop. That's the only difference. They would talk about how Russia's the strongest country ever. They can take on America in a war, no problem. Like, they've been hyping up this an entire special operation, saying that it's going to be easy for a country as strong as Russia to go in and destroy Ukraine. And for the first time, as long as I've been aware of Russian state TV and Russian propaganda, they've been really critical of the Kremlin, saying that this is embarrassing, they need to fully mobilize, they need to up the intensity, which is, is not the thing you want to happen. You don't want them to start trying harder and like really shelling places and whatnot, but that's what a lot of them are calling for. They're straight up saying that the Kremlin is embarrassing and that they need to figure it out because they're losing. And when a country like Russia has people on state TV admitting that they're losing, that's a big deal because places like that do not really do well when people start speaking out. And usually the people that speak out end up uh, disappearing relatively quickly. But I've seen a lot of people on the state television talking about how they can't win in Ukraine. They need to totally rethink their strategy. The Kremlin leadership is failing. And nine times out of ten, all they do on this show is just say, the Russian government is the greatest thing to ever exist. They're so smart. It's, it's incredible. So it's been a weird shift this last week, especially because the counteroffensive that Ukraine launched was so effective. CIA Deputy Director David Cohn said that Putin's risk appetite should not be underestimated. I don't think we should underestimate Putin's adherence to his original agenda, which was to control Ukraine. I don't think we've seen any reason to believe he's moved off that. Separately, at the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Uzbekistan on Friday, Putin promised to press ahead with his attack on Ukraine and warned that Moscow could ramp up strikes on the country's infrastructure if Ukrainian forces target facilities in Russia. Putin said the liberation of Ukraine's entire eastern, eastern excuse me, Donbass region was Russia's main military goal and he saw no need to revise it. Well, I think even that eastern region is a little bit of a walk back of them saying they were going to march into Kyiv within like two days. And uh, I think what's really happening here is Putin can't win, but I don't think he's going to admit that he can't win. I think the CIA director here has a point. He's probably just going to start leveling things with artillery. For those of you that are like into history nerds, the second Chechnyan war, he kind of leveled this city called Grozny leveled it with artillery like real bad and uh ever since it's kind of been the standard they just level stuff they haven't been doing that a ton in ukraine because if you want to take over a country and add it to yours and have the people support you you can't blow up everything important but the more they lose and the more they get embarrassed the more potential there is for putin to kind of start upping that threshold because he's embarrassed and that would really suck like that's not something you want especially because Russia probably does have uh, chemical weapons they could use. Should they? No. No. And if they did, it would be big, big trouble. But if Putin gets embarrassed enough, I think he's probably crazy enough to do some crazy stuff we've never seen before. I don't know if he would nuke, but if there is a guy who's got his finger on the button that's like closest to pressing it right now, it is probably him. I don't think Ukraine should give up. The counteroffensive has been insane. They're making further and further pushes every day, and the Russian military is just kind of falling apart. But I do think Putin probably does try to make like a counter counteroffensive or something happen to stop the speed of then gaining territory. I think that's a given. So uh, we'll keep it updated for like next week. All right, and the last thing we're going to talk about, I, I've been watching a lot of the Modern Warfare 2 gameplay. I haven't played it myself yet. I don't have a PlayStation set up right now, so I haven't played it. That being said, there's a few things that I'm going to comment on that already kind of annoy me. First of all, why did they get rid of YY canceling the reload? I, I don't know. I know it's a stupid thing to be a little annoyed about. But it's just such a classic, and especially if you're going to take the namesake from Modern Warfare 2, the least you could do is keep the YY in the game, because like the YY no scope is, is a classic of Call of Duty, but especially Modern Warfare 2. The gameplay looks about what I expected it to look like. There's nothing that's crazy innovative or exciting, but there's also nothing that's insanely disappointing. It just kind of looks like a solid Call of Duty. Maybe they can make it better with patches and whatnot. Maybe the maps are good. Maybe I'll play it and fall in love with it. Who knows? 
I don't know. I, I wish that they would have just had the balls to remaster Modern Warfare 2 because, like, that's what they just should have done. I don't really like this whole we're going to name stuff the same way, but it's a different game, so you, you guys kind of have to have some nostalgia for the name, but everything else is different. And then the only other thing that Call of Duties have been doing in general recently, which I personally don't really enjoy, I'm sure some people feel the same way, I don't like that they kept breaking up the lobbies, like, in between every game. I like in Call of Duty, if you're in a good lobby where you're just dominating, just stay in it. And if people stay there, that's their choice. If they want to leave in lobby refresh, they can do that. But I just think this whole breaking up every lobby in between every game... A, I don't know this for a fact. It feels like it makes matchmaking take a little bit longer. That's probably not true. That might just be placebo. But on top of it, like, sometimes you're in a fun lobby. Sometimes you're in a lobby where everyone's running around with riot shields and you have, like, a mutual deal to only use riot shields. You don't want that broken up. It doesn't let you have those lobbies that you used to have, like, way back in the day where you would get a chill lobby together and you would be like, okay, let's see how many people someone can kill with a noob tube. That type of stuff. I don't know. There used to just be some fun in kind of making friends in a Call of Duty lobby and playing together. I don't know if there's something to be said for maybe the way they do it now makes it faster and I'm just dumb. But, like, I don't really understand why they have to break it up every time. Is it a trash-talking issue? They don't want people, like, talking too much trash to someone over and over. I don't know how it works. Maybe they do it like it's you're together for a certain amount of time. Like maybe you get two games with the same lobby and then something pops up on screen and you can either pick to stay in that lobby or leave. And then everyone that picks to stay stays. But leave it up to people. If people are having fun in a lobby, I don't know why you're going to force it to be broken up. And I know just add each other. Like true, true, you could do that. But I don't know. There's something fun about just not having to worry about it and just living in the moment a bit and not being like, yo, bro, I'm going to add you and then we're going to have to link up and join this server and then I'll invite you back. And then, oh, crap, my game crashed and it takes everyone 20 minutes to get into a game. For some reason, all these online games, like, sometimes it's fast, but I also find myself spending so much time trying to, like, get into a lobby with my friends sometimes because everything just stops working right when you need it to work. I don't know if that's boomer of me to say or if that's a, a relatable experience. Either way, I'm excited for the game. I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna play the crap out of it. I, I haven't really watched too many uh, people's first thoughts on the game or anything like that this is just from like the gameplay i've watched and i've just watched gameplay because i didn't really want to know everybody's opinion before i give my own not that it would really change mine but you get what i'm saying like if someone points something out and you're like oh that's actually a good point yeah that is kind of dumb it, it can change how you view things so at the moment neutrally excited neutrally excited i'm not like gonna run out and tell everyone to get it and make all my friends buy it but I'm still going to get it. I'm going to put solid hours in. Solid chance you're going to see gameplay on the channel. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it for this week's episode. If you enjoyed, like, comment, sub, all that stuff. I've got a little bit of a challenge. I've been doing them a little bit longer every week. But if this video gets 750 likes, I'll do an hour one next week. And if that video gets 1,000 likes, then I'll just make an hour the regular format. Uh, I think I'm going to start, like, reacting to some videos in these episodes, too, so let me know what you think of that in the comments section down below. But, yeah, on that note, guys, that'll really do it. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do make sure they're hot, I'm out. Peace.